My name is Randy Lloyd. I'm the Ag Awareness Coordinator and School Program Coordinator for the University of Illinois Extension Office in McLean County in Bloomington. I've always been interested in agriculture, of course, and this is a, a neat way of taking people to our farm and not just showing them what we grow, but also having people visit a take a virtual tour of the wind farm. It's a trust ground between my wife and her two brothers, and then we're involved with Twin Groves Brim Farm by having four turbines on our ground. I'm always happy to share the information with people because I'm interested in wind energy and conserving the environment and making finding alternative forms of energy, and that's why I'm happy to invite you to join us on this little tour. How many turbines are at the Twin Groves Wind Farm? How much electricity is produced? There are 240 turbines. They make enough electricity, all 240 turbines, to provide all the electrical needs for about 118,000 houses for a year. They start turning at about 6 miles an hour, and they stop turning at about 55 miles an hour when the turbine then turns at a right angle to the wind and the blades feather so that the wind is blowing past them, and that's at a, for a safety feature. And then they will, that's when they shut off. What is it about the landscape that makes Twin Groves a great place for a wind farm? We sit on top of the Bloomington Moraine, a moraine that runs all the way from Indiana clear up to Wisconsin. It was formed 25,000 years ago by the Wisconsinian glaciers. Dug out the Great Lakes and dropped all this soil here in these series of moraines. And the Bloomington Moraine is one of the biggest. And because the moraine is here, the wind that comes out of the southwest 60% of the time will hit that moraine and come up the hill, and as it increases, it comes uphill, it increases speed, and it hits the turbines, and that was, that's, what, that's what makes this a really good place for the wind farm, mainly because of the moraines that are here, that were put here 25,000 years ago. Why are the turbines placed where they are? What factors determine the location of the turbines? All the turbines are placed in specific locations. They have to be so many feet away from houses, from buildings, from power lines, from roads, and they also have to be 1,025 feet away from each other. The reason is because the nacelle, where the blades are, will turn into the wind, whatever direction the wind's coming from, if there's two turbines that are closer than 1,025 feet, at some time they're going to be facing the wind the same direction. And what will happen is the turbulence from the upwind blades will damage the downwind blades and the warranty will, will expire. And they also have to be careful about where they put them so because they don't want to put them in wetlands because this, as I said, you know, we talked about moraines. This was all swampy soil up here. And at one time or another, this was all a lot of, a lot of wetlands were here. So they had to be very careful not to put them in to wetland areas. The last reason that they're, they're where they are is because uh, at some time back in the 1600s, this moraine area, the, where this wind farm is, was the home of 20,000 Kickapoo Indians. There are still areas where there are a lot of Indian artifacts buried in the soil up here because this is where the Kickapoos live. They live on top of the moraine because they had trees, they had water, they had livestock, and they had game to, to, uh, for hunting. And because their enemies were down in the, on, off the moraine, they could keep an eye on they also had, they had to be careful to, to not put them the towers where there was going to be a concentration, archaeologists felt, of Indian artifact. One of the four terminals on our farm is located because they thought that there was probably a concentration of Indian artifacts in one spot. And when they did a little research, they found out that wasn't the case. But it was, that's all, there's arrowheads all over up here, which you don't find anymore because we don't do any fall plowing, which brought them to the surface. Each of the Twin Groves turbines has a red navigation light on top sits on top of the little triangular thing on the back that is actually the radiator that cools the oil that cools the generator. And that light, when they first turned all, they first had all the 240 tur turbines in place, they turned them all on at, the same, at those lights. And those are aircraft navigation lights, so the airplanes know where the towers are, because the towers themselves are 263 feet in the air, the blades go 135 feet above that when they're at the peak of their, of their arc, so it's up there in the air pretty far. Well, the tower, bl the blades on the navigation lights, they, they don't blink. They turn on, and they turn off, and they turn on, and they turn off. They do that all together. So as you were flying in an airplane, all you'd see is this huge field of 240 red lights turn on, and then they would all turn off. And people were wondering why, the, you know, why what that was. It was quite a conversation piece for people riding, flying in the, air, in the Bloomington Airport. They decided that, you know, that we didn't, that was a little bit overkill. 
So what they do now, they only light the towers that are on the perimeter of the wind farm and then a few selected lights inside. Two of ours are lit up and, and I'm not sure exactly what the total number is now that are lit. From the ground, you can see them from a long way. You can see them all the way from Mansfield on a clear night on the overpass on I-74 in Mansfield. They look like they're blinking, but they're not blinking. They look like they're blinking because the blades are passing in front of them so that it appears from certain angles that some of the towers are blinking, but actually they're not. They're all just come on and they all turn off. The blinking is what the, the passing of the blades is what makes them look like they're flashing.